The signing of Jay's Treaty solves one problem. It solves the problems that the United States was having with the British, but it's going to create another problem, and that is going to be uh, that it's going to look like a Fr an Anglo-American alliance to the French. The French are going to be disgusted, and in 1796, they recall their envoys, uh, and later they're going to annul its commercial uh, treaty. Uh, in reaction to the Jay's Treaty, they're also going to start attacking American shipping on the high seas, uh, taking, uh, seizing any ship that's carrying goods to British ports, uh, and, uh, and summarily executing any, any um, uh, American sailor found on a British ship. In addition, we're going to start seeing with the notion of impressments, basically the forcing of American sailors aboard French ships to serve on, on, to ser to serve on, the French, on these French captains' boats. Uh, so, Adams, and rather than making a lot of political hay, and he could, we'll talk about this in a, in a later slide, uh, but instead of making uh, political uh, benefits for himself, uh, Adams is going to basically try to uh, to ward off a, what he would consider an unnecessary war. So this whole chapter with French relations is going to be known as the Quasi-War, the Almost War with France. In fall of 1797, He's, Adams is going to send three men, Charles Pinckney, Char John Marshall, and Elbridge Gerry, to negotiate a, uh, a settlement with the French. Initially, they're going to be refused uh, to be even seen. And this is not like flying in an airplane, going to Paris, and going to see the French government. You have to remember, they are sailing across the Atlantic Ocean uh, you know, for weeks and months on, on time uh, in, order, in order to see the, Fr the French government, and now they're refused. But nonetheless, through three intermediaries, we're going to have... Uh, uh, we're going to have the opening rounds of negotiation. Uh, the French foreign minister is going to demand a bribe of $250,000 for himself, a loan of $12 million, and an apology from Adams himself for his anti-French remarks. Adams is going to receive news about this, and of course Congress is going to want to hear about it, but he refuses to tell them who these French intermediaries were made, named. Uh, in fact, he's just going to call them Mr. X, Mr. Y, and Mr. Z. But despite the fact that they were trying to uh, negotiate a diplomatic settlement to the dispute, Adams says we need to start preparing for war. And so in 1798, he passes and signs into law the Direct Tax of 1798. What this basically does is it upgrades the Army and the Navy. And he even appoints Washington as the general in charge of the Army, uh, with Hamilton as his second in command. This is the only way that Washington would have ever accepted this command, is if, if Hamilton uh, was his second. Well, this is not going to feel, feel very comfortable with Adams, because Adams distrusts Hamilton. Hamilton, Hamilton, but nonetheless, we um, are going to see that he does not, you know, that he has to accept this situation. But American ships are already fighting the French in the Caribbean, and so in preparation, we're going to see this direct tax of 1798. It's a levy on the value of land, slaves, and dwellings in order to pay for an upgraded army and navy. 